was what? A Judas was what there in the physical, but his mind was not what there. He was just looking at them. But the nine, if you counted, if you did head count, you had nine. But if you do heart count, you'll count eight. You know, it's unfortunate when the head count is more than the heart count. If you counted Judas or then, you spoil the matter. Nine of them, if you do head count. But if you remove Judas because his mind was on money, his mind was not on healing anybody, delivering anybody, helping anybody. His mind was on how much money can he have? Judas is carried. I pray it will not be in your midst. And that's when you come to pray to remove the mountains. I pray Judas will not be part of your team. But you see, the, all these eight people with sincerity and heart and faith and everything they could muster. They prayed and they said, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. And then he said, Because verily certainly I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's verse 20. Verse 21. How be it? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. We generally don't read that verse with verse 20. The Lord is saying, you must count your faith more important than your food. You must want to have more faith, not more food. And the believers of today, they want mountains to go. They want difficulties to dissolve. They want problems to leave. But they put more emphasis on food than on their face. If you were speaking to some people on face, and your talk on face, developing their face, will get into the time of their food, they lose interest. And they say, look at your time. Food is more important than faith. If you want to help us, everything you want to say, but don't touch anything that will delay our food. And somebody has to tell you the truth. That how be it, this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. Moderate fasting, normal fasting, scriptural fasting, not the fasting to destroy your body and to destroy your life and to become useless to yourself, but fasting with forgiveness and love. Because fasting without forgiveness and love will also mean nothing. We have a lot of people that are fasting and there's enmity and hatred in their heart against the people they call their enemies. That kind of fasting too doesn't work. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good unto them that despisefully use you and persecute you. And pray for them that hate you. That's what Jesus says. So we know fasting without love, fasting without forgiveness, that you will not work. How be it? The sky goes not out. Go well, prayer and fasting. But your own problem will go out today. 
the challenge you need today in Jesus' name. Point number two. Rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Discouragement sometimes can be so powerful and strong that you forget what you have. You know when you are discouraged? You forget where you are coming from. And you forget where you are going. All of a sudden, the discouragement blocks your view. Do I have, do I know some ministers of God that so God discouraged and they just threw up everything. They threw away their calling. And they threw away their opportunities. Do I know some families that just packed, the wife packed out and forgot all the various privileges she has in the family. Discouragement. Do I know some children that run away from their home because of discouragement? Do I know some people in the church that will not come into the fellowship of the believers because of discouragement? Discouragement will make you to forget where you are coming from. Discouragement could make you to forget where you are going. This God may can make you to forget the healing covenant the Lord has with you. This God may can make you to forget all the promises and all the blessings, all the privileges, opportunities you have in the kingdom of God. Discouragement, what a mountain it is. But now today, we're going to remove all the mountains of discouragement in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 4. Numbers 21, verse 4. And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea. Before I go on, let me explain that to you. The journey is the greatest journey they ever dreamt of to leave Egypt. That's a great experience. To leave captivity, that's a marvelous experience. And to leave slavery, where they had been in the cage of Egypt and Pharaoh for hundreds of years. What a great deliverance it was. And then they took their journey. And every step should be a step of joy. Every step should be a step of thanking God, praising God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I glorify you. What a journey this is. Out of captivity into Canaan. Out of bondage into blessedness and breakthrough. And then they should be thinking of where they're journeying to, where they're moving to, where they're going. Going to the land of promise. And they should be thinking, when I get there, when I get home, when I get to the land flowing with milk and honey, what a glory, what joy it will be. A great journey. But discouragement made them to forget the delight and the joy in that journey. You know, that's what happens. Here we are now. If you count your blessings one by one and you see what the Lord has done. He has saved you. What a blessing. He has sanctified you. What a great blessing. He has filled you with the Holy Ghost. What a great blessing. You have the name of Jesus. What a great blessing. You have the blood of the Lamb that redeemed you. What a great blessing. You have the promise of heaven, New Jerusalem, where dwelleth righteousness. What a great blessing. You have precious and great promises that are given to you that you might become the partaker of the nature of God. What a great blessing. And then he says righteousness which you are is profitable for this life and profitable for the life to come what a great blessing this joy where strangers are pilgrims in this world and we're joining on to the land of promise but this commitment will make you to forget what you have you know sometimes I look at a great crowd like this and it is not it is not easy to find a great crowd like this and sometimes you have a great opportunity to come and preach a great crowd like this we just spend a lot of money to make publicity and to and to gather together 
all this great crowd for you if you are preaching here to come and preach too and then we you know all these uh, wonderful ushers are just standing there to just make the crowd to listen to you if you have a for you to come and preach and then you know something happens in your district a little sin and then discouragement comes and you forget all these opportunities all these social security singers musicians that are you know cooperating with you to make you serve the people a great crowd like this discouragement comes and then you give up i don't want to be in the church again what do you want to do i want to go and start my own and it's only the voice of discouragement and then you go to start and you have five people and those five people they can you know they don't even know how to sing any good chorus they don't know how to you know say proper amen they're you know disgruntled five people and you are left what are you doing discouragement why don't you just count your blessings and see the good good things you have and throw the discouragement away and do not allow this coming to block your way let's come back to this verse, verse 4 numbers chapter 21 verse 4 and he journeyed from mount all by the way of the red sea i cannot go on until i tell you again about the red sea it has never happened to any group of people in any generation that they got to the brink of the Red Sea. And the Egyptian I mean the chariots were behind them. And they cried unto the Lord. And Moses cried unto the Lord. And God said, Moses, why are you crying to me? Stretch out your rod. And he stretched out his rod. And the Red Sea parted. And just divided before them. And then with joy shouting and singing, they went through the Red Sea. And then the mightier nation, the greater nation, the fortified nation, and the people that were armed to their teeth, they tried to do the same thing. They went into the Red Sea. In the middle of the Red Sea, the sea came back on them as Moses stretched his rod. And he swallowed them up, drowned them, and they all died. Pharaoh and all his chariots. And he came to this other side of the Red Sea, and he was singing to the Lord. And they forgot. Forgot. Spectacular miracle that had never happened. They forgot. Something so great, so wonderful, so mighty. And they forgot. Because of discouragement. The children of Israel. They forgot the great thing the Lord has done as they came out of the Red Sea. Then it goes on, it says, to come past the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. But they had manna that morning, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. There was a pillar of light before them, and a pillar of fire, and a pillar of cloud during the day. But the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Discouragement is like a mountain, standing before many people. I will not allow them to move on. But we are moving on. We know the trick of the devil. The devil is saying, I cannot get them to steal. I cannot get them to cheat. They believe in holiness so much, I cannot get them to commit adultery or fornication. They will say, no. They resist me. And the devil is saying, how can I get these people? I cannot get them to worship idols. I cannot get them to, you know, bow down to Pharaoh. What can I do to make them give up? Oh yes, there's one tool that remains. In the armory of Satan. And that is discouragement. And when discouragement like that comes people who have been strong 
in terms of temptation. People who have been standing even when they had great persecution. And they were standing and nobody could drive them back from the kingdom of God. When discouragement comes, they collapse. They fall. They are crushed. It appears this mountain of discouragement has destroyed many more people than even the other big, big sins that you have been thinking about when you have been avoiding and overcoming. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, And David was greatly distressed. This is chapter 30. Chapter 17, you remember, this is our champion, the champion of faith. With the courage of faith. This is our champion with the confession of faith. This is our champion with the confidence of faith. This is the one that says, I come to you in the name of the Lord. This day I will take your head away from you. And the whole world will know that there is no God except in the land of Israel. This is our champion. Champions are defeated when discouragement comes. It's a mountain. And David was greatly distressed for the people speak of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man and every man for his son and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That's how he got out of that 